up in Ingsy Hood. Look who that guy is. Hello there, everybody. Good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know. I'm super glad to be here. This is a 2013 Hyundai Sonata. I think it's uh, here for a, uh, a noise complaint. Customer states, uh, steering wheel is loose and it makes noises going over bumps. Starting the engine. Let's, uh, let's head out on the road real quick. Go for a test drive. Attempt to recreate... Uh, this customer's concern at 122,964 miles on the odometer. Now, first things first, I said the steering wheel's loose. Doesn't feel loose. There's some clicking going on in that column, but... Oh, I see. Yeah, there's something loose in there. Okay, so the steering wheel is in fact loose. Let's go try to recreate some noises and over bumps and whatnot. They said to check the uh, the front end. I guess there's some more noise or some looseness on the outside and undercarriage. So uh, let's give this thing a full comprehensive evaluation. Then we'll go from there. Clickety clack. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video. All right, so if we're looking for noises over bumps, the best place to find bumps is those railroad tracks over there. There was a train blocking this for, for a while. I'm glad he moved. Anyway, let's see what we got here. Hmm, <laughs> a bunch of noise in the steering wheel. Okay, so this loose steering column business is quite unsafe. And it feels very unstable. I, uh, I don't like that too much. It's not okay. That's a potential vehicle safety drivability concern. What are we doing here? Everybody's just kinda hanging out, not going anywhere. I'm gonna go. Somebody the other day scolded me for making a right at a red light, and we can do that here, so... So yeah, that's okay. I can make a right-hand turn. I mean, you can't just like roll through the red light and just keep riding, but if you mostly stop, then you're kind of good. But what you can't do is make a left on a red unless you're on a one-way road turning onto another one-way road. So you can make a right on red, but not a left on red. You know, it's really warm in here. Let's fire up some climate control. Good. All right, green light, we're off. All right, it seems to feel a little unstable too. Like it kind of just stays. See, if I turn left, it stays going left. If I turn right, it stays going right. On top of that weeby wobbly steering column condition. So there's there might be a couple things going on here because it shouldn't be sticking that's steering. See how we're doing that? Yeah, that's that's not okay. All right, so there's something going on. Probably maybe a sticking ball joint or a strut plate or something like that. There's something going on down below, and then there's some wear going on in here on the steering column. Let's go ahead and flip back around. We will return to the shop space, and uh, we'll get this up on the rack and do a visual underneath carriage inspection. U turn right here. There we go. Checking the mirrors, we're good. I need to find some more bumps real quick. I'd like to recreate more of that vibrating steering wheel business. Whoa, Camaro. He used all of his V6 horsepowers. And we're off. More steam. So I'm sitting here at this red light and I hear, I don't know if it's coming from the column or if I hear something else down below, but there might be multiple things that are worn out on this and or sticking or bent or binding, who knows? The shadow knows, we're about to know, I'm gonna find out. We're gonna take this uh, dash apart in a minute and see what's going on down here. We got new fire trucks. Look at that. That's pretty. That was a really pretty fire truck. All right, one more pass over the tracks. Let's see if we can't hear anything else that's abnormal. 
do a maximum speed railroad track crossing 14 miles per hour. Hmm, that was gross. Okay. I think we've seen enough. Let's get this thing up on a lift. Security is open. Hello, tow truck. Finishing up the body work. Make it nice and shiny. Okay, I think we're going into the third stall on this one because I don't want to tie up the big rack and the little one is tied up with some other stuff. Or the middle one, rather. This is the little one. That's... I think that one's got a rated capacity a thousand pounds more than this one. They're both little. They're not truck racks. And right about there is good. Say we're good here. Parking the auto. Powering down. Alrighty, so I'm laying down here underneath of the vehicle. Here's our steering wheel. Here's our keys. We are hanging out inside of raw oh, can't spit in here. We're hanging out inside of the driver's footwell. Now right here, that's the steering column. There's the intermediate shaft and right there, there's the universal joint. So that guy right there, that's the U joint for the intermediate shaft and the steering column. And if I wiggle the steering wheel, we've got a pretty good confirmation here that that joint right there, that is our, our noise. There's some loose, looseness and some play in the steering joint. Uh, additionally, look right, let's see if I can't get to it. Look right in here. We can see where it looks like once upon a time there was some contact made between these two components. So there is some play in that this universal joint right here. And it's probably got a bad needle bearing or two inside of it. And it's got flop, slop and flop, floppy sloppy. And that is our, uh, that's the source of our noise. If I put my hand on it and kind of squeeze this joint while creating the symptoms, I can feel it. It still makes the clicking noise and I can feel it, but it's a little tough to see. Let me try to stabilize this and see if we can't see this noise in action. Yeah, bear with me, folks. It's right there. Either way, it's inside the cabin. It's not upstream or up in front of, deeper in the column. So it leaves me with one conclusion that the noise is right there. It's not right here in the slip joke and it's not farther down. We got it right up here. So we're gonna go ahead and recommend replacing of this intermediate shaft and then uh, we can go from there. So let me get this on the rack and we'll take a look at the underneath carriage just to make sure that there's nothing else down below uh, like something causing that sticking slash binding condition that we talked about earlier. Okay, let us pop in and see hood. And we can take a look under the bonnet as well. Alrighty, the rack is set both sides. Silver subscribe button this time. Let's get her up in the air. I want to take a look at the ball joints and the tie rods to see if any of them are sticking. Uh, if you recall, we had that uh, condition where the wheel would stay off to this side or this side when driving. So I, uh, I'm assuming that something is binding up in here, uh, but let's get it up in the air and uh, just take a look down below and we'll see if anything is holding up the steering. Um, I've already located and found a steering shaft. Uh, that thing is on uh, on order. I won't get that today, but we can still proceed with uh, the overall diagnosis. All right, so here's how we need to uh, check for this binding condition. We're gonna pull the wheels off and then we're gonna disconnect the tie rod ends from the left side and from the right side. At that point, we can maneuver left and right the suspension system. And if we feel either side binding, that's gonna help us isolate the component that is causing it. So let's get these wheels off. Full speed ahead. NASCAR, go fast. Actually, can't go too fast because the socket can scratch the wheels. We don't want to do that. Taking care. No NASCAR. There we go. Take that guy out. How's our brakes looking? Pretty decent. Okay, so our inner tire rod is right over here. It's a little crustomatic. Here, I'll just turn all this so I can uh, maybe get to that nut. It seems to have a cotter pin and what's that look like? A 15 mil? Yeah. There's a 15 millimeter sized 
fastener. Okay. It's not actually a cotter pin, but it is a retainer pin. So let's unretain it. I can't get a hold of this guy here. I'd like to do this without pulling the brakes off. We're just doing some diagnosis work, not some disassemble the whole vehicle kind of work. This pin doesn't want to comply with my will or my pliers. What is this? It's a non-compliant pin. You. Come here. There, got it. Look at that. Yay! All right, wrench coming in. Let's break her loose here. Unclicks. Ooh, that actually was an unclick. That was a good one. Oh, these threads are uh, kind of crust or rustomatic. There we go. Switch it out to a shorter throw wrench. Spin that guy off. Become removed. Now, I can't be damaging this uh, tie rod because I don't know if it's faulty or not. If it's not, I gotta put it back. Ow. There we go. All right, let's give it some hammer taps here to break that thing free. Aha! I probably could have used a smaller hammer. Come on out of there, Rustomatic. Okay, that, that joint's not very tight. That might not be our problem. And this ball joint here seems to move without an issue. So I'm assuming that this side is not the affected side. That turns and that ball joint's not super duper tight. So. Let's go do the same thing over to the other side and see if uh, that ball joint and or that tie rod is the, uh, the culprit here. So let us uh, circumnavigate our Hyundai. We'll check this other side here. Tool cart coming in. There we go. Good. That's wheel number two removed. And we'll turn this at our all the way out angle. Give us a better line of sight here on our on our tie rod. There we go. That's good. Okay, we've got another one of these little uh, retainer pins in here. So we get a hold of that guy, pull it out, out again, and then back. Pin removed. 14 wrench coming in for the unclick. Right there. Let's give it a tug. Okay, it broke free. Kind of. There we go. A little more. And I'll finish it off with the uh, shorter wrench here. For more speed. Different gear ratio. Ooh, let's get tight again. I'll hit you guys with my wrench. Terrible. Sorry. Or how many black eyes I've caused. There's another one. Sorry, guys. I won't do it again. Yeah, I probably will. I'll hit you with a can of brake clean tomorrow. Come on, nut. I'm gonna be annoyed if I don't find anything wrong with this. Cause I know what I felt. 
and the customer knows what they felt because they complained about it. So we know there's an issue here. The question is, am I on the right track or not? Impacts coming in. That one's good. And our ball joint here is good. All right. All right, it's been a few days and I finally got some parts in. I had an order. Everything was delayed on account of the hurricane, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get back uh, at this Hyundai right here and we're gonna get that steering shaft removed uh, and replaced. Okie dokes. So uh, a little bit over a week has passed. Uh, it is far past the date that this car originally came in and I have had an arrival in the mail. We have ourselves right here a brand new factory OEM steering shaft direct from Hyundai Kia. So what we're gonna do is head back out to the shop, knock the dust off this thing, and we're gonna go ahead and get the steering shaft changed out real quick. I'm pretty sure that I lost uh, some footage between last week uh, when this car originally came in and now when I got a hold of our steering shaft here. We had a hurricane since then. All kinds of other stuff has gone down and occurred. So I don't know if I lost footage. I ended up pulling apart the, uh, the front wheels on this thing. We checked out the steering linkage, ball joints. We checked out the struts, the sway bar links checked out the uh control arm bushings and i mean you can see here that everything is uh it's it's in used condition it's not it's not great but it's also not horrible i don't think and i didn't find any other contributing factors with the front end of this vehicle that could have helped cause uh the issue with that sticking steering so we're gonna go with what we know and change out our steering shaft first then we can reevaluate and go from there so let's get this thing down to see you to a more manageable height down here. We'll crawl back inside to our interior and get that steering shaft unit removed and replaced. That's pretty good right there. Not all the way down, but close enough. So our new unit here is very simple actually. We've just got a telescoping shaft. It slides uh, in and out of itself so it can change length. So you can see it's uh, splined right there. And on either end, there is a, uh, a clamp to fit on its mating shaft and a little baby U-joint. So we just got a simple, it's almost like a drive shaft really. It's like a miniature drive shaft. All righty, climbing back into our cabin here. It's been a few days. Uh, we're at our steering shaft and I need to get this bolt here broken loose. It's a, so this is a telescoping shaft. One piece of it will slip in and out of the other piece to change its overall length and it's splined so it can't rotate within itself. We need to, uh, we need to get one of these collars broken free. Come on now, on a click. Ah, that's tight, that's super tight. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn the steering wheel to the left a little bit and I'm just gonna give this a, a tug. I'm trying to get a straighter angle onto my ratchet. We're gonna pull this thing till that bolt breaks loose. Come on. Uh, come on now, almost uh, on click. Whoo! That was a good one. A little more. Oh yeah, there we go. That thing was tight. It must have been locked tighter or something. Some kind of uh, something was hanging onto that. It couldn't have just been pure torque. You guys heard the snap when it broke free. That was something else. Okay, there's our bolt. Looks like it's in good shape there. So now we've got one of those, one of the U-joint clamps loose, and there's another one down here at the bottom of the shaft behind the carpet. We need to get back there with a, a wrench or the same ratchet and uh, get that one disconnected as well. Yep, there's our bolt right there, see it? See if I can't uh, reach down through here. Hopefully this one's not as tight as, uh, as that upper one. Okay, that's not the same size socket either. Hang on, retool. All right, so 
there's not much space down there on that back side. So I went and grabbed, got a wrench here so I can break this loose and then I grabbed a thin wall or a super ultra shallow socket right here to help me squeeze in there with the ratchet to get that last uh, last bolt out of that hole because that's that's pretty far away. That's actually protruding past the firewall into the uh, engine compartment. So I'm trying to reach here. Let's give that a tug. Oh, it's turning there a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna break loose. That's good. Yeah, okay. That one's loose. Loose enough to get in there with the ratchet anyway. And let me see here. Where's my socket? It rolled away. Okay, socket coming in. We're on uh, reverse mode here. This uh, dinging. <sighs> Hang on a second. Reach up, kill that key. Kill this dinging noise here. There. Lose, Hyundai. Spin this guy out. Warm. Come on. There we go. Just keep spinning, spinning. Now, when I get this out, we should just be able to collapse the shaft and it'll slide off of uh, both ends, both off of the steering column behind us and off of the uh, rack and pinion down here below us. Ooh, I was afraid I loosened that so much it captured the bolt between the um, the body and the shaft there. It's hot. I'm trying to speed this up with the wrench now. There we go. And there's our bolt. Just reach in there and kind of pull this uh, steering shaft up and it should, should just come free. There's no corrosion here. <clears throat> like laying on my back upside down. I'll pull it down from the top. Try that first. And then the bottom should just wiggle right, right on off of there. Let's not forget what position we're in here. I'm taking note of the orientation of this uh, the shaft. Nothing is turning and it's pointing right towards that word right there on that little piece of, piece of paper. I've got my reference. I know that sounds silly. I probably should mark it, but I can't. Uh, I know what I'll do. Hang on, I got an idea. Okay, so here's how we're gonna change these units out. I've got my my new shaft coming in and I'm taking note to not put it upside down. You can see it's got a, a bigger end and then a smaller end. So we're going with the big end first. What I'm gonna do is line these guys right up to each other and we're just gonna take note that that, uh, that uh, area right there, that opening is facing directly towards me. So we're just gonna slide this guy right up. Come on up and out and put my new one right back where it goes again facing straight towards me oh yeah so reach back in take our bolt slide that bolt back into its home here thread it in and we'll tighten it down Tightening, tightening. Almost there. Still tightening. Here we go. Coming up on some torquage. Good. All right, let me switch positions here. So I'm uh, in a better spot to apply some final torque leverage to this fastener here. I'm halfway hanging out of the car. 
my feet on the ground. <clears throat> Give it the thumb push. There we go. And a little bit more clickage. Okay, so that's our bottom U joint and our top one right here in my hand. I don't need to index that with the steering wheel because I pulled the key out and the wheel is locked in position. Uh, additionally, there also happens to be a relief right, uh, right here in the shaft that uh, will prohibit a misalignment situation here. So I think right about, slide on there, right there. Good. Okay, I've got my uh, fastener here. It's just, uh, is that the wrong side? Yeah. Yep, I'm misaligned with my slot. See that? Yeah, right. Right there, you can see through the hole, there's that slot. Let me slide that forward some. Try the bolt now. There we go. Get in there, you. Okay. Where's my 14? Looking for my socket. Now my uh, my other 14, the one that fit. There it is. All right. Keep running that down until I can't do it by hand, and then I'll, I'll tighten it with my ratchet here. By the way, did I mention it's a little warm in here? <laughs> it's a little hot. It seems that the cool weather after the hurricane only was going to last a day or two. Yeah, there's so much energy transfer after a storm like that that it's somewhat cool. Gravity. A little bit more here. Oh yeah, that's good. It's getting tight. I'm not going to attempt to tighten this to that ungodly amount of torque that I found it at because I think that was might have been just like locked in or somehow just stuck but uh, I'm pretty sure that was mm, click too much too much torque than uh, what was required for that size fastener anyway so we've got her tight it's in rocking our wheel back and forth and I do not oh steering wheel locked I did not feel any uh, any binding or sticking condition uh, with regards to these u-joints so let's hop out of here real quick uh, we're going to toss the wheels back on the car. We're going to take this thing back out on the road to confirm or deny a complete repair. So let's go ahead. We'll back out of here. Grab our goodies, tools, the old part, etc. We'll go to the bench and check out this, uh, these U-joints on this thing just to confirm that they were binding. And then, well, at least visually confirm they were binding. Uh, then we'll toss these wheels on and we'll hit the road. All right, steering shaft. Show me your problem. I believe it was the top joint that we thought was making noise, correct? Hmm, it's interesting. I don't feel it. I don't feel it here at all outside of the vehicle. Yep, let's get the wheels back on. Take it on a test drive and see what's going on. Alrighty, Hyundai coming down. We're on the floor, let's go ahead and clear the rack restarts the engine and uh we'll take this unit out on the road for quick tech test drive tech drive we'll take it for a quick test drive and see if we still have that uh binding steering slash clicking noise in our uh, steering system i find it interesting that i do not hear and cannot replicate the noise on the bench so it maybe it needs to have uh, some kind of a load on it before that click noise or failure presents itself but uh we shall see Okay, climbing in, bolts are tight, wheels are on, those are tight. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. The noise is still there. That's why I couldn't hear the noise on the bench. I misdiagnosed the situation here yeah that thing's banging away everywhere oh man i failed you guys i failed Rut row okay, let's back up so we have a better view we're gonna go back down below and recheck oh goodness gracious man oh no oh no oh no
All right, back down below, there's our joint that I thought was suspect. And there's our wiggle. It's, it's not in the joint, it's in here somewhere, like that bearing. Oh man, okay, well, is what it is, I failed. Looks like I'm eating this one for lunch. Oh goodness. All right guys, well, now we have no need for a test drive because uh, that was an incorrect repair. All right, well, since that was a complete failure, no need to go on a test drive. Putting this vehicle back in park, Whew, shutting her down. Our steering shaft is not the problem. So that's the bad news. Uh, the good news is, is I've got myself a new miniature drive shaft so I can do something fun with that later on in life. Um, but uh, fortunately I failed and I have wasted this customer's time and pretty much done this job for free. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. Uh, I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below uh, what you think about this situation here. Don't forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a better day than what I just had. So again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in the video. For now, end of Hyundai, end of transmission, end of day.